Three, two, one. Good evening to all those who are viewing and are here with us. I'm terribly sorry. There's been a bit of a technical issue. So sorry for the delay, but all's well that ends well. And uh, today we have an especially interesting session ahead of us. Welcome to the Objective Students Career Conclave 2020 by HP and Intel in association with Better Photography. These sessions are particularly meant for students who are looking out to gain a foothold or an understanding of subjects, topics, processes and approaches, and an understanding of the path forward. If you have attended the previous sessions, welcome back. This is the concluding webinar of a series of 14 webinars that began on the 20th of August. If this happens to be our first session you are with, that you're with us, you can still catch all of the previous webinars on the website pmglive.in or in the video section of Better Photography's Facebook page. We have invited some of the most well-known professionals from across India who have carved out their own legacies to be a part of the series. So don't miss out. Today's topic is one that is very close to me as well. I think today's speaker will agree with me when I say that among all forms and genres of photography, the family photograph is perhaps the best measure of the success and value of this art, science and technology of photography. Over the past 181 years since photography came into existence, portraits of families and members of families have driven not just the need for photography, but the commerce of photography as well. A very simple example is the wedding photography industry in India. Among every kind of commercial photography, wedding photography happens to be the most lucrative, and why not? A wedding, after all, is among the most meaningful for family members, and that too, between several families, not just the immediate families of the bride and the groom. But it does not end there. In India, over 92% of the huge photographic printing industry is supported by wedding photography. That's 92% supported only by wedding photography. It still remains true that the very best, most telling photos in every family album so far has been made by family members, even if they did not really know anything about photography. And there is a very special reason for that. When you love the subject as a family member, as only a family member can, it shows in the photo. As they say, the secret ingredient is love. Nowadays, with the advent of the cell phone, a lot of interesting opportunities exist, uh, even just at home. In today's webinar, our main speaker is Zishan A. Latif. He plainly defines himself as a visual artist, but having known him, he is a leading voice of young of a younger generation of Indian photographers. Today, he will be speaking on the topic, the art of developing an excellent family album. But before we have Zishan address the audience, we have a short presentation for you from HP. Once again, to all the viewers, thank you for being with us. Before we move on to our main speaker for today, please let me introduce you to Akshay Bakchandani from HP, who will be speaking about the HP series of Chromebook uh, for, of laptops. These multifunctional devices are excellent for students, but they fit many requirements as well. And Akshay is here to speak about just this. Over to you, Akshay. So oh, very good evening to each one of you. Thank you so much, Madhavan, for introducing me. Welcome to this session. I hope all of you are doing well by maintaining social distancing and keeping yourself safe and healthy. My name is Akshay, and I feel we all have a better understanding of how technology, as an enabler, how it helps you gain education 
as well as explore your creativity at the same time. So let me just quickly go through some of the HP Chromebook, which can be really useful for study or work during these times. Well, the very first question that definitely comes up into our mind is what HP Chromebook is and why is it so special and important? Well, uh, HP Chromebook is essentially a laptop which is based on Google operating system for all those who do not wish to go for Windows and keep it simple to a browser, choose for HP Chromebook, which makes work extremely easy because of the five major USPs that we have. Yes, we are talking about the USPs speed, security, simplicity, shareable, and smart, just like our audience is. So let's start with speed. So guys, ever thought that there could be a device that can just boot under 10 seconds? Yes, I'm not saying 30, 20, but just 10 seconds. So no long load times, no confusing setup. Chrome operating system is designed to be light and extremely fast. It automatically updates in the background, so no manual intervention at all, and obviously it doesn't slow over time. Talking from the security point of view, security from the start verified board, performs safe checks to repair any system corruptions and is always steady security with built-in virus protection and auto updates. Sandboxing web pages and apps run isolated environments to prevent infection from address pages. Simplicity. We definitely need something that is simple to use yet smart at the same time. So it is extremely familiar, easy to use, no setup needed, just log in with your Google account. When we talk about familiar and intuitive Chrome, the Android ecosystem has 1 million plus Android apps on the Play Store for you to work, play, create, watch, and definitely listen to the music. Shareable, collaborate on a project on Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides with automatic saving of files. Connect, create, and collaborate files are back up in the cloud, which are available anytime across all the devices easy multi-accounts login, just switch the account and get your personalized experience. Talking about a feature that is as smart as our audience is, yes, we have something special in HP Chromebook that is smart. Learn, adapt, and evolve. Yes, the built-in Google Assistant feature for faster and smarter work without even lifting a finger or switching between the tabs. Make Google do it all for you. Access Chromebook with smart lock on the phone with local language inbuilt. We have a variety of languages to work on. Now coming to the next important point that makes Chromebooks that can be used for work from home as well as learn from home. By reimagining your office Chromebooks are secure, simple and shareable devices that helps you stay productive and connected. Here are some useful tips for working from home. It is extremely simply to set up a Chromebook. Yes. Simply log in into your Google account, get it going, and access all your Google Drive files and Chrome preferences on your Chromebook. Apps that get the work done from Google Play provides access to apps for getting work done, like Microsoft Word and Google Docs, as well as video conferencing apps for collaborating remotely, just like the one we are using right now, Zoom. No monitor, no problem. Cast your Chrome tabs to the Chromecast enabled TV or use virtual desk to expand your desktop. Work safely from Chromebooks that keep you safe and your data safe as well from the malware attacks, thanks to the multiple layers of security and automatic updates. Well, a very important point comes up at this point of time, why Chromebooks are very special for students. Well, ever thought of a device that can give you more than a million of your favorite Android apps and more for a bigger and more immersive experience. Yes, the HP Chromebook does it for you. Example, you can have your gaming apps, you can have your streaming apps, Office, and editing apps at a certain level. We have the voice-enabled Google Assistant that works on your speech and words. Play, send emails, setups, all HP Chromebooks are Google Assistant enabled. And last but not the least, let me tell you about some extraordinary features of HP Chromebook. Yes. HP Chromebook works offline as well. No Wi-Fi, no issues at all. We have access to a lot of, lot of apps that works online or offline, just like any other laptop, so that you can edit Docs with Google Docs or Microsoft Word, watch movies who doesn't like to stream while doing work. Yes, you have the Netflix and Amazon Prime for that. 
and who doesn't love to listen to music absolutely you and i can go to gana or spotify and absolutely play games in the offline game apps chromebooks have microsoft office entirely for free microsoft office is available on the google play store where you can download apps you want excel powerpoint and work on microsoft office programs from chrome web store you can also open edit and save microsoft file in the google drive now when we talk about all these things we definitely come to a point that do we have enough storage as well will hp chromebooks come with a hard drive a cloud storage as well as micro sd card so there's triple whammy 64 gb ssd on board 256 GB expandable Microsoft micro SD and 100 GB of space on the Google Cloud. Whopping 420 GB space, my dear friends. And here coming to the last point, but the most relevant for all the students and teachers out there, we have the G Suite for education. Communicate, email, and VC. Collaborate, edit your spreadsheets, documents in real time. Manage, you may create classrooms, distribute assignments, and send feedback. administer you may add students manage devices and configure devices for security data so that's all from my side thank you so much for being present here and patiently listening and request you to please go and explore chromebook at the hp world show thank you Thank you so much, Akshay, for detailing out the many features of the HP Chromebook for us. In today's webinar, Zishan will be speaking on the topic, the art of developing an excellent family album. He will describe the two ways to approach a family album, the conventional and the unconventional. He will also be speaking on how one could build a compelling narrative using family photos. Finally. he is going to talk about the importance of maintaining a family album and how it becomes useful within a family in the future a little bit more about uh, zishan latif he is an independent photographer since 2005 zishan's work stems from intuition and passion which blends into the personal and sometimes the eclectic he loves working with different textures formats and art forms even uses the art of motion pictures in his creative pursuits he has photographed stills uh, for movies and series such as sacred games pk three idiots and the second best marigold hotel among others zishan's work has also been showcased at numerous exhibitions including serendipity arts festival indian photography festival and the pre lavelua prize and the pre pre lavelua prize lyon in france Thank you so much Zishan for joining us here this evening the stage is yours Um thank you so much Madhavan thank you for having me here um I feel really happy to be here and share my experience trying to put together a very emotional journey with uh my family my family um, album or stories that came together so uh, unintended but you stumble upon a lot of stories very emotional stories very hard to swallow at times but um also very important to address so um So um, I'm Zishan, and uh, thank you for being here. And uh, um, you know, I think the first thing that I actually want to mention is the the amazing thing that the pandemic has actually done for all of us is to it's helped us reflect and recognize the power of relationships. for so many of us who live alone or away from family i think what the pandemic has actually done is it's made us realize how important the document of photograph being a document 
and then when placed in either a physical or a digital album is an escape that we want to cherish i think it's so important that this time is actually it's given us a lot of time to reflect on relationships so i'm really glad that i can talk about my journey and my reflections um about um a family album if you want to call it i don't know about the idea of excellent let's let's re let's redefine the word excellent because i think what might be excellent for me might be very 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 subjective and very different for you so um um my excellent means i'm i'm emoting through the album right and it and it and it helps the family right so um put together emotions of the family and i'm going to dive into my presentation so um i think by now we all know um what an album actually is i think because every generation has its own idea of um an album coming together of photographs um or things and objects that you can put in one place in the olden times it could be in the form of a really thick book that uh, photographs were st stuck on the edges with adhesive and they became these really amazing experiences heavy experiences and uh, with probably just names of family members and so a photographic album or a photo album is a series of moments collected over a period of time by an individual or a family member originally in the form of a book but today with the advent of technology i think all of us use albums to share on the internet with shareable links i too in fact uh, because of the internet or because of my own website if i want to share um my experience or my um understanding of uh, the stories of the family i share it through shareable links uh from my website so this is a physical form of uh, what i um uh went into in about 2016 i i got into uh, wanting to put together these emotions into a physical object of memory that's what i call it a physical object or a, or an object of memory and now that that it can it's because of technology it's transient right it it can go into um the physical and now the shareable link which is dig digital which is easily shareable with anybody maybe a family member who's not in the same country or not in the same house that you can share across the globe um the physical form has a beautiful nostalgia uh to it it's it's you can smell the paper it's 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 a beautiful feeling so i hope at some point uh you can also print the experiences of a family um story or an emotion that you want to uh talk about um so 95 money villa was my experience uh talking about certain very very emotional issues with my family which i'll come to later but this is an overall um it this encapsulate how encapsulates how i went about um using the conventional book um using archival material from my family from my mother's uh side uh then moving from archival material that my grandparents photographed or how had photographed so i collected those photographs which became the next generation of my parents photographing themselves uh through a tlr tlr camera a twin lens reflex camera that my father used to photograph with so uh, when my parents were romancing my father would uh photograph the two of them uh, in mud island or wherever they used to go so it shifts in the third row it shifts from um if you see a collage of square photographs that is when my father and my mother's relationship starts so that's why i go from my parents archives to the emotions that were photographed with my parents when they were romancing to slowly when they got married the only photograph that they have from the marriage is the color color photograph on the on the last photograph uh in the in the third row uh then comes to once they are married the polaroid 
So you here you also see how you're working with different kinds of mediums, uh, the progression of uh, photography in its art form, in its um, in its technical form. So here it's been the use of the conventional moving into uh, the new age. Then I then I came into the picture having a lot of questions about my parents and their uh, and their uh, story, uh, which we'll speak about. But um, and then I use the photographs that my parents photographed when when my sister was uh, born in eighty one, and then I was born in eighty four. So the understanding of family albums. Every family has stories, and my family also has a lot of stories. And so I use a lot of archives from the 1960s, from the 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, when I was born, when my sister was born. And then I come in in 2010. So the two black and white photographs are me coming in as the grandson. So my intervention came in as a grandson who happens to be a photographer. So the, you, you can, with this grid, you see the movement and the techniques have changed. And this physical object has actually used all kinds of techniques, photography techniques, to try and talk about the same story and the use of old material to talk about the same story. Um, each generation now, like our generation or your generation, um, you know, comes with we come with our own new techniques and renewed intention to tell a story or our, our, in, you know, our, our notion of telling a story probably has changed with technology. So every generation also comes with, comes with its own conventions. So which can be digital. Um, as we spoke earlier, olden albums, uh, thick books, uh, uh, glued photographs are glued upon and today they are digital links. So we are moving with time because now the choices are endless. How you want to share your experience or the emotions of a family album or an album. So here are examples of um, I've taken screen grabs from my website showing also the link on top because this is important to show that this link is shareable with the world. So this is also a digital album. My experience as a grandson, spending time with my grandfather, I had a lot of unanswered questions from my family, which, um, which asked me or I was craving for answers. Hence, I got into a journey to dwell into the life of my late grandfather. But all this was, it all came because of my mother's decisions, a lot of decisions that my mother took um, when it came to marriage and the choices that she was probably forced to take or she wanted to take. So a lot of these, we'll talk about questions and curiosity. Here I made an audio, I made a film on my late grandfather when I spent time with him at 95 Manivilla. So 95 Manivilla is this house that my mother grew up in and then left for, which is in Jhansi on the border of MP and UP. So um, my mother comes from Jhansi. So she went as a small town girl to Bombay, to Sapphire College to, to study. Um, then, um, you know, falls in love with uh, my father that she finds, she, she found a friend, then falls in love with my father in the Mumbai University. And a lot of drama ensues after that. And uh, so that, that is what I think many years later, I realized there were a lot of these questions that I wanted to ask, or I, I felt my grandfather had answers to. So, uh, so I spent a long time um, with some roles, with some, with some cameras. I went and spent some time with my late grandfather in 2010. I began spending time when I, I didn't have much work as a photographer. Um, I was in the middle of work, assignments, films, um, so I would go and spend this time with my late grandfather. Um, I think it began as a quest to know more about the decisions that my mom took. But I think it eventually became about just spending time with my grandfather, which was extremely enriching. 
and it's always very emotional for me to speak about because i think it's such a universal experience to um cherish these moments with your um late relatives and to be able to to have the honor to have photographs as documents for posterity i think that is really important which becomes eventually the album physical or digital memory which is very important so this i took screen grabs from my film which also can talk about the life the day in the life of my uh, late grandfather danji ankesaria and the beautiful home that he made with my late grandmother mani incidentally the house was named after my late grandmother mani um so what is a family album um there are different approaches to this but you'll know the kind of approach that you need for yourself but there are there are no um answers to this you need to feel it uh, there is the conventional a blank book for the insertion insertion of uh, photographs of relatives um which again i mean i started off conventional with my own uh, album uh but then i started writing on it which became my experience so it became unconventional so here it is it's probably it looks conventional right a book i've um, i've printed the photograph the archival photograph of my uh, mother's family outside mani villa uh, in 1964 when they bought 95 mani villa um then there is uh, the unconventional a collection of stories so i got into i moved between the conventional and i kept moving i kept oscillating between the conventional the unconventional um because it had a purpose you because as i spoke i had spoken earlier about the movement of even photography technique so i moved from uh, the conventional to the to the unconventional then i come in as someone who's again using film but again in my own technique in my own way in my own approach so uh, we can all redefine the words conventional and the unconventional it really is about the emotion that you want to tap into um a collection of stories um again so i started off with the physical i started writing i started writing after i started printing um these old photographs that i found or i asked for from my mother and my uh, late grandparents i then i started once i printed the book the album i started experiencing emotions which i wanted to pen down so i just i printed um a very rough um uh, example or a very uh, rough dummy of this uh, album uh, with cheap paper and i just started writing my emotions so that's where the new layer of unconventional unconventional happened when i started emoting through writing um again comes to the chapter of my parents meeting in college romancing getting married then my emotions of how i've uh, been brought up around this environment then here i come in which is the next layer um of me spending time with my family and the holidays that my family takes at 95 money villa um and um you know uh just a very interactive because i also have on the fourth or photograph from the second row i have a first photograph from the second row i have a, a letter that my grandfather every time i would go to my grandfather he would give me letters so i preserved these letters as another layer of emotion oh, okay so approach 3 uh, again unconventional 2.0 an immersive experiential collection of emotions okay which can be created by yourself or you can collaborate because really what happens in independently you're so attached to these emotions which which are so rife and even ripe at that moment that you probably forget why you actually needed that photograph or you why you needed that um that text then you collaborate and it opens up an unbelievable array of new ideas so i was really fortunate to 
uh, collaborate with uh, Sebastian Foucault. Uh, again, a beautiful uh, human being and uh, has a beautiful sense of design, um, a photographer himself. So I collaborated with this because, you know, I, after so long of being with this, these emotions and stories, you get fed up emotionally. It's very draining. So you need to step back and let someone else take charge after, of course, knowing the emotion into it. Of course, he knows where I'm coming from, but it's good to collaborate because you step back and you see it opens up a whole new meaning to this emotion or story or feeling. Um, collaboration is key to get a fresh eye and an unbiased perspective on stories. We might feel that we, have, that we might feel we are very attached to. This fresh perspective gives a healthy separation and changes the way you look at your own work and its perceived emotion. So here Sebastian comes in and says, you know, Zishan, maybe I get what you're trying to do, but maybe we can do it with just two photographs. Maybe I don't need five. And so this decision helps in the overall laying out of the album. It gives space to the viewer or to myself or to my own family. So here is an example of what uh, Sebastian started working on. Um, a beautiful idea of layering. So here multi-layered emotions. Here he takes different kinds of paper material to talk about a very different kind of emotion. So he prints the archival material on a different kind of paper, which got a different feel, tone, which authenticates the feeling of that time or gives me a, a notion of that time and that feeling. And then he prints mine on a very different kind of feeling, but also layered different sizes. So you're coming in and out of different perspectives, but of the same story. Layering. Uh, the construction of parallel stories within, this, within, within the larger narrative of the same emotion. Because layering is essential to build connection, yet have their own secular identity. So here there are multiple um, stories, probably also told by different people, but talking about the same emotion, which is about, can be anything that you decide about, decide on. Um, here is an over um, arching sentiment of how he went about, how we went about um, gathering things and also foldables, right? Extension of emotions. So here you have like my parents series comes in, slips in somewhere, which is you're, ex you're extending that time. So a lot of metaphors, a lot of sim symbolism in the way it's been designed. So here is really unconventional storytelling in the physical form. Um, Sebastian's use of varied materials, paper type sizes automatically authenticates a greater connection to the tangibility, feeling, literal feeling, um, relatability. You can relate to that emotion and palpability. You, you feel it, right? You can like physical as well um, of the story being told. So very important to use. You're using different material for different emotions and different periods. Um, so there, is, there are no rules um, in constructing your family album. Um, you need to feel it. Um, I've been reiterating this point of feeling in emotion because it is a really in-depth emotional journey that you will know when it, when it ticks within you, when it clicks within you, you'll know. Um, treat your album like a movie that you're directing. Um, you're the director of a cinematic experience on a journey to discover one or many threads of the story. So you're a director, your calls, your decisions, your, you can call it cut. You have that honor. You can decide the flow of the story. This, you can decide the script. You can, you can come in as someone who's calling the shots because it's because it's your probably your journey with the family 
a family album is equally important to build to place a price on relationships i'm going back to the idea of the, of the pandemic and all of us experiencing and having time to reflect um this either the lack of connect with the outside world and how we've been taking relationships for granted so this time has actually taught us a lot and if anything the photograph becomes a proof a document of posterity and the idea of relationships that we need to nurture and not destroy um relationships again um my grandparents on top with the, with with gallant their um, german shepherd dog with my mum with my grand with my grandmother um the whole family again outside 95 money villa um my parents getting married in um in 79 1979 then um my sister on the left and me in the uh, 800 800 uh, the first lot of maruti suzuki 800s that were launched by the by the japanese in india in 84 i think yeah and then of course my uncle my mama uh, who again had an estranged relationship with his own father which is my nana danji uncle sarya so again these very dicey relationships coming into the fore which i when i grew up i realized i was living with these emotions and i wanted probably resolution so i took up this whole journey of trying to find answers through 95 money villa becoming the overarching sentiment or the metaphor under which i wanted to ask questions to my uh, grandfather who was alive then um again uh, choose your approach by asking these questions um again how will you choose your approaches and how would you go ahead um who are you very intrinsic to the flow of your album or the journey that you will take who are you intrinsically as a human being uh why do you wish to tell a or this story i had my reasons okay so i had my reasons there were a lot of unanswered questions uh, there was a lot of curiosity um that i was that i was brought up around there was this whole this very this this larger than life figure that that was my grandfather danji uncle sir and i wanted to spend time with him spend time with him to know maybe those gaps that i never knew when i was growing up so i had a reason um very important to ask these questions because uh this exercise will define your innate personality and story telling ability you'll probably when you ask these questions realize maybe i have a different way of asking these uh, or maybe i have a different form in which i'm going to um tell the story but you need to ask these questions who you are um uh, where do you start blank as always just no pressure you're the director it's your movie you decide okay blank slate blank slate sorry that was i have to put in that as a literal uh, image questions you need to ask questions of yourself or your family be curious um intrigue are you intrigued by your family's journey are you intrigued by your upbringing are you intrigued by your grandparents journey are you intrigued by um the involvement or the lack of involvement that your family had with the outside world um what excites you um curious be curious about your family's history history is beautiful uh my mother will laugh at that because she felt i had no um uh, no curiosity um i i wasn't interested in history but being a visual person now when i look back i'm so intrigued by family albums or archives that it peaks your curiosity right and uh, and i'm glad that photography happened to me or the visual arts happened to me because we should know where we are headed we won't know where we are headed if we don't know where we are coming from i think that's really important hence to go back to reflect on where you're coming from ask these questions from your family your parents your mother your mother's journey your father's journey um the twists and the turns 
uh, your family takes or has lived through a um, lot of unanswered questions it's beautiful it will open up a pandora's a, a pandora's box this curiosity leads to a story if not many but be open to these questions ask questions it's so important um as i said earlier everyone has a story every family has a story my mother was the reason i wanted to ask these questions um she led me to um lot of curiosity about her upbringing about her relationship with my late grandfather and the decisions that she had to make and again look at these beautiful photographs like a studio portrait uh leading to my father taking a beautiful um moment of my mother um in um, you know she's in her own world she's uh, probably catatonic and he goes and uses his camera in a it's so beautiful i it's it's lovely and um, then again my mom photographed by my father um every family has a story and we cannot run away from that some choose to talk about it and some don't but the story doesn't doesn't go away anywhere um i based my family album on one man one protagonist uh, my eccentric uh, and amazing uh, grandfather a mighty figure as i said earlier while growing up he was this uh, disciplinarian stickler for things and parsi so it comes with that um so uh, um a mighty figure who influenced our lives in everlasting impactful ways which i will know which i would know much later only when i spent those moments of silence and even moments in darkness with him because silence between us spoke so much um uh which soon became about a place right so for me the album um, the 95 money villa the house became a metaphor to start this album became a starting point where i where i could assimilate all this emotion and this feeling and these feelings that i could put together into something but i but i didn't go in let me let me clarify when i went into spend time with my grandfather yes i had questions but i didn't go in make thinking that i'm going to make an object of memory keeping him in mind as my protagonist no never i went in as someone that wanted answers yes but also just to then i realized the time photography became secondary it was just about spending time with my with my fa- uh, grandfather which was so emotional which was enlightening um yeah here it is i mean um uh you know in uh the way i photographed uh, 95 money villa um the surrounding of money money villa um there are different different on the screen you'll see um the background is the photograph that i took off the entrance to uh, this beautiful beautiful world called uh, money villa uh, then on the right you have a screen grab of the digital album that is on my website of um 95 money villa then there is the physical form the object of memory on the left uh, again using my photographs in you, when you see now this on one screen i've used it in a particular way to to illustrate that the same emotion can be in a physical form a digital form and an experiential exhibition which is the third photograph fourth photograph uh, which is in complete darkness uh, with light boxes to give in to give uh, the idea of silence and um, darkness that uh, my grandfather and i uh, spent at 95 money villa so an experiential um exhibition um uh, installation um okay you going to be triggered by emotions uh, because every family has stories maybe it's important to talk about them i chose to speak about them and i didn't have any qualms talking about it if if my mother or my parents or my extended family we use this as an opportunity to to bring together the family to talk about long lost uh grieving and which 
I think was the need of the hour because there was a lot of estranged relationships. So I think I became and my process as a photographer and spending time became really pivotal in getting relationships back again. So my estranged, the, the estranged relationship between my, my mama, my uncle and my nana. So when I used to stay with my mama in Bombay, so the only connect my mama had with his father were my photographs. So he would see the prints and he would see the photographs and, and probably get emotional. And he was probably grateful to me as, a, as his nephew that took this opportunity to spend time with his father. And at least somebody was there asking questions or who wanted to spend time with this man who was so difficult as well. Um, sorry, I get emotional because it is a very emotional experience for me. <sighs> um, sorry, I'm going to have some water. Uh, see, emotion, really important, right? Uh, again, the physical form, the object of memory printed, and then the, this was when my um, grandfather passed away um, on the 7th of December, 2012. Yes, it was difficult photographing uh, him in this way because I had spent, because I've, I had immortalized him on film and then here he was um, mortal in a way, again on film and then put onto an object of memory. The story never disappears. It lingers. Some choose to talk about it. Some don't, but, it, but the story will never disappear. You rather confront it and get resolution. And then it leads to happiness. Um, the reconciliation, um, the process in 1986, when my sister was born in 81, I was born in 84. So this is when these, my questions of like, the reconciliation because my parents ran away and got married. So there's a, there's a chapter where I, where I go through these emotions and where my father had to deal with a lot with my uh, Nana, with my, with my grandfather. So um, yeah, so the chapter, again, very emotional, have to go, have, I had to write about it um, because it was important to, for, as, as, a, as, as reflection and as, as cathartic as it needed to be. Um, this is when our relationship started becoming, it started, the process started because my, once my mother and father eloped and got married in 79, so 79 to 86, my, my mother didn't meet her grandparents in Jhansi. So no communication. So these were things that I stayed with and I wanted to ask my grandfather these questions. And that is why, that's where my process began. Of course, this reconciliation leads to happy and memorable stories and emotions within the family. Then you spend time together celebrating birthdays. We, every December, we would come back to 95 Manivilla, uh, spend birthdays with my, uh, grand, my, my, my late grandfather's birthdays. We would spend together. Um, yes, which became again part of the album or the book. Um, you need to, you need to follow your instincts to question, to know more about the family, about maybe individuals. <sighs> um, again, the object of memory, every family desires a safe and secure object of memory to hold these stories strong and albums occupy that place of prestige on the mantle for posterity. Every family has that family album. Either you make it or you collaborate or, 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 or the family makes it. Huh. Yes, the album becomes a reason to go back. Very important. Here it is, two different, two different um, renditions of that emotion. One with Sebastian on the left and one that I attempted myself. Um, my approach fluctuated with purpose, as I've already spoken about. 
a combination of conventional, the unconventional, the experimental, uh, the experiential with the with the live and the installation shows, which also became uh, a form of uh, an album, a live album, with an audiovisual at the, at the with with sound, a soundscape, an audiovisual playing to give to layer one more emotion. Huh. All these approaches were determined by the way I wanted to narrate the story, in which uh, format and at what time in my life. All key factors to disseminate information that is universal in sentiment, but uses technology to touch upon a larger audience in today's time. So we're using technology. I'm using Zoom right now to talk about this emotion with you. So this is testimony, technology, to disseminate the story with a larger audience. Uh, the conventional and the unconventional, the installation show was an example of that. Uh, for installations, one should be driven by the need to transport the viewer into a sensory experience by redefining the space where you can feel the story and share the emotion. If the book can do that with emotion, so a space, so a space can also do that. You need to redefine the space for you to feel that emotion, the time that I spent with my late grandfather. I will create a certain space so that you feel that emotion. So here, is, here are um, photographs uh, from an installation from the exhibition at Tark in Bombay in 2014. Light boxes, they were, they were put together as uh, chapters uh, of, my grand, of the time that we spent with my uh, late grandfather. Again, the show in installation, which had an audiovisual running. So we, there was also this new layer of a sensory experience of darkness, of um, sound, of, of audiovisual. Um, my overarching sentiment was to unearth these, these, these answers uh, from my grandfather because I believed he had the answers. Um, screen grabs from my audiovisual, a different experience because a moving experience versus a still in, uh, experience, I believe are different. And to be able to use both is also important. This quest uh, became an excuse to rekindle relationships and long lost emotions. As I was talking about my, my mama who lived through these experiences through my photographs of his father. It all comes together. Huh. 95 Money Villa became a metaphor to bring the family together. The simple things around 95 Money Villa, the relationship that my grandfather had with Gallant, his only companion for 10 years, he lived alone in this massive house because my, my grandmother passed away in 2002. For 10 years, he was alone. Of course, family came in and out um, in this place, but he loved it. This was his world. This was his palace. It was his rules. <sighs> My explorations of 95 Manivala were more immediate. These crucial elements of the house, uh, small things, the relationship with the dog, uh, which add to the narrative. My late grandma, I mean, late grandmother's lingering presence, of course. The mantle within the mantle. Archival photographs. The idea of immor immortality comes through a document, a photograph. And the album becomes its permanence, a resting place. Amazing. Photographs of photographs. With time, nothing else matters, but the time that you spend with your family. And what a better time to reflect on this. Yeah. The house became the album, really a collection of emotions. Symbolic, all around you, my late grandparents at 95 Money Villa, the two, two butterflies, symbolic, the goodbye, but that you managed to actually hold on to 
with the photograph in the album. Yes, so long emotional experience. He was 90. He lived a full life on his terms. From a demanding father to a doting grandfather. See the, the, the transition. Yep. So the funny part is like I've attempted these two albums or, or books, but none of them have ever been commercialized. Maybe not meant to be, I don't know, not yet. It's, it's so symbolic. Um, these are two attempts that, you know, I'll take down as something that my family holds sacred more than anything else. These documents remain sacred that my family and I revisit in times of reflection or in need of self-preservation. Uh, um, again, all the sweet memories that you cherish, that you hold on to, my grandfather's handwriting, slowly from my grand, my very, you know, he began writing these, these sweet letters to me. And then slowly my mother had to write for him because he was weak to write. Then the last one on the right, I had to write for myself in his presence. This again, this whole, the whole journey. Huh, um, very emotional. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for hearing this. Ah. Thank you so much, Dishan. Uh, that was very, very, very moving. Very moving indeed. You know, so I could I could feel, you know how, uh, you know your emotions. Uh, thank you for sharing this with us. Uh, I'm, it's so funny. My mom is calling right now. <laughs> it's uh, wow. Yeah. So we have a very little time. Uh, so I'm going to quickly actually uh, move on to a, a very quick, very quick, just a comment that came through, which I thought was very, very interesting, and very apt also. Uh, so it says that the physical book uh, someone is writing, uh, the physical book is quite beautiful. Maybe the idea that these moments are tangible and and therefore delicate and finite and time-bound. It can and will be lost someday. Unlike digital, which, is, which despite its huge memory has no memory at all, is lost from the beginning Ooh. itself. Uh, so I think somebody is a poet. Thank you. There was there was an interesting comment that came uh, in the beginning of the session that said probably a student of yours who's attending. Um, I'm not sure. It says uh, love you, Zishan. Okay, so that also came through. Thank I you. I must say. Uh, okay, so there is one question that I would like you to answer before we uh, before we log off, and it is a question that is a quintessential one. It comes from many. It came several times from several students. So do photographers make a living doing family photos? Can this be a career? Um, I mean, I, I, I don't make a living out of these emotions, but yeah, I mean, I had to, I juggle these different parts of my life, right? I think you need to, I think you'll know if you can, but I, I don't know anybody, who, I, I'm sure there are people who make family albums for people, but my journey has been personal. As I said, in the end, my two attempts at the print object have not been commercial. Um, I did it because I wanted answers. I may have not got it, but I'm glad that I experienced that uh, journey with someone from my family. Um, I have not made money of it, but it's not about that for me. Um, I think you'll know if it needs to be for you. I wouldn't be surprised if there are people who do that for a living. And, and I'm happy that within photography and all the genres, you can do so much. So if to say there and you can't do it, I would be foolish. I think you should attempt talking about, and if you want to do it in a very personal way, it will be difficult to get into that zone of somebody else's family, but why not? I think attempt it to know if it works for you or not. And if it's commercial bonus, Literally, and uh, but 
आई थिंक इट्स वेरी इट्स अ पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंस बट इफ यू कैन डिटैच फ्रॉम योर ओन इमोशन एंड देन गेट इन टू समी एल्स इन इमोशन दैट विल बी ब्यूटिफुल बिकॉज एक्सी एस फोटोग्राफर्स वी ऑल्सो डू दैट वुड यू फोटोग्राफिंग अदर स्टोरीज ऑफ अदर पीपल वी आर we are capturing their emotions and their insecurities as an outsider you're there right so i think um, why not if it can be commercialized or let's not use a commercialized if it can become a prof- profession within the profession a genre within the profession i think it can it can open up so much i think and because that also takes us back to the family archives correct the idea of the family archive it's so important to cherish those it's so important it's so beautiful yeah thank you so much uh, zishan for spending all your time i yeah, and it's, emotion it's, energy you know it was a wonderful wonderful talk that brings so us much. to a conclusion of uh, your session at this point of time uh, hopefully we'll have many more uh, coming up but uh, this thank brings you. us to the end of this particular session thank you so much really for being glad. thank you so much Yes so Zishan came and spoke about many wonderful wonderful ideas thank you so much uh, there were some very very valuable pieces of advice that uh, Zishan uh, gave us uh, he mentioned the physicality the palpability these are words that Zishan Zishan used that I actually jotted down because I think that they are so very important show the showing of relationships looking at the story from different perspectives choosing uh, an approach uh, asking the correct questions Uh, talking about identity the importance of having a reason for making a family album in the first place you know he encapsulates all of this in the idea that you need to treat your family album like a movie that you're going to direct with a storyline with relationships with intrigue he used the word intrigue and excitement as well and of course uh, zishan says something that is very very true everyone has a story to be told but it is important to be true to yourself to your feelings to your family uh but uh the story never disappears that's again something that i found very very interesting about zishan the entire thing it says the story never disappears it lingers very well said zishan and thank you for that thank you for those of you who want to see more of zishan's work simply do a search with zishan a latif on google uh but you can also visit his website uh, zishanalatif.com that is z i s h a n a latif.com or visit his instagram handle with the same spelling uh of course for those of you who have been watching uh, thank you for all your questions you've been an excellent uh, audience as i mentioned at the start of today's session this is the concluding webinar of a series of 14 webinars that began on the 20th of august once again if this happens to be the very first session that you are with us for you can still catch all the previous webinars on the website pmglive.in or in the video section of better photography's facebook page we have invited some of the most well known professionals from across india who have all carved out a niche for themselves carved out their own legacies to be a part of the series so please don't miss out on viewing the series if you have not seen all of them before um, before we we part i must once again thank zishan Uh, i must also thank all the other mentors who have been with us previously and all those who are currently behind the scenes because there are many behind the scenes who have helped in bringing out the series to you invisible to the cameras a very big thank you to hp and intel and finally to my team in better photography who have all been instrumental in making this series a success this concludes the session of the objective students education conclave 2020 by hp and intel in association with better photography thank you all for watching and have a great evening ahead